So with no further ado, I think I want to start specifically uh, to describe the rationale for this uh, uh, type of uh, uh, program. And uh, the concept is that living well with dialysis is a legitimate aspiration for every patient and for every single physician that is treating our patient. However, this is what we call an unmet clinical need because uh, life in dialysis still present problems and complications. New technologies have permitted some improvements in dialysis care, clinical outcomes and survival, however, at medium long term are still poor. Outcomes of end-stage kidney disease patients have been correlated with the blood level of medium-large molecules insufficiently cleared by renal replacement therapy. And therefore, we should improve removal of uremia retention molecules. Single approach may not be sufficient to solve this issue. And in fact, a new therapy should be utilized where the spectrum of molecules removed closely mimics the work done by the human kidney. What are the problems? Problems uh, relate to the fact that patients are older, sicker, and have a lot of comorbidities. We have suboptimal middle and long-term outcomes. We have lack of adequate renal replacement therapy that is leading to complications. Increased morbidity affects quality of life and higher hospitalization and increased cost. And we need to improve quality of blood purification. We have identified today the correlation between specific molecule accumulation and related syndrome, serum amyloid A and beta-2 microglobulin with dialysis-related amyloidosis, leptin and appetite-suppressing toxin with malnutrition, granulocyte inhibitory proteins with infection, parathyroid hormone homocysteine with cardiovascular complication and osteodystrophy, and finally, erythropoiesis inhibitor, epsidine, with anemia. And most of all, we must say that uh, we have seen that there are many molecules that represent inflammatory mediators that should be considered the potential elements uh, for the onset of symptoms in the uremic syndrome. These, as you can see, are somehow distributed over a wide range of molecular weights and current membranes can only partially correct this accumulation. In fact, uh, uh, high flux dialysis uh, and uh, high cutoff membranes uh, have represented the limit together with the high retention onset membranes. However, still in the area of uh, medium to large molecular weight solutes, uh, we have insufficient clearance uh, and therefore a kind of a new approach should be considered. And we have considered to add uh, uh, to classic diffusion, convection uh, through highly permeable membranes. Uh, uh, however, adsorption may represent a third component, which is extremely important to remove, not anymore by membrane separation uh, uh, process, but rather for direct uh, contact with blood and adsorption on the surface of a sorbent bed uh, molecules that otherwise are retained. The rational is uh, because of limited efficiency of membrane separation process, possible selectivity of size exclusion absorption process, and possibility of placing the solvent in direct contact with blood. There are also limitations. Uh, the solvent must be hemocompatible and adequately coded. Size-dependent non-selective absorption may cause unwanted losses, for example, antibiotics, and sorbent may alter the requirement of heparin in the circuit, so anticoagulation should be monitored closely. But certainly coupling absorption with dialysis using a sorbent may represent an interesting uh, uh, solution. Now, in order to have an effective sorbent therapy, you need an effective and safe sorbent material adequately designed sorbent cartridge, optimal utilization of the available surface of the sorbent, high hemocompatibility of the sorbent, and easy application of the technique. 
And we have available today devices such as the HA-130 cartridge from Jaffron that is representing the optimization of uh, all these aspects. First, the raising has a specific absorption range control thanks to nanoscale molecular sieve control technology that adjusts pore size distribution according to target toxin, molecular weight, and radius. And as you can see, the structure is three-dimensional so that molecules can be absorbed on the external part, what we call the interface process, where mass transfer of the solute from the bulk fluid by convection through a thin film of boundary layer is uh, taken to the outer surface of the sorbent. By interface or internal mass transfer of the solute by convection from the outer surface to the sorbent to the inner surface of the internal porous structure. And finally, surface diffusion along the porous surface and absorption on the solute onto the porous surface. Here you see a three-dimensional reproduction of the structure of the bead, and you see how the molecule can actually uh, somehow uh, permeate the three-dimensional structure and enter the uh, channels and the porous structure of the sorbent. What are the mechanisms? Van der Waal forces generated by the interaction between electrons and one molecule and the nucleus of another molecule, which are weakly and generally reversible. Ionic bonds generated by electrostatic attraction between positively charged and negatively charged ions typical of exchange ion raisins, and finally hydrophobic bonds that are generated by hydrophobic affinity of the sorbent and the solid molecules. Now, we have seen specific uh, benefits uh, from the application of uh, uh, these cartridges showing the effectiveness in removing substances such as PTH, for example, in presence of intractable uremic pruritus. And this is an important aspect uh, to be considered. The other aspect is the possibility of an advanced coating technology is making uh, extremely biocompatible the surface, uh, leading to a flow dynamic uh, uh, condition that avoids dead spaces, tendency to clotting, and interaction with cell and proteins uh, of, uh, of the blood. In order to do that, not only the beads should be well designed, but also the solvent cartridge and the uh, structure of the solvent. And here you see how the sorbent uh, contains uh, different components that uh, allow uh, uh, perfect uh, uh, free flow of the uh, uh, fluid phase, which is blood in this case, through the sorbent bed, which is packed in a way close to 35% uh, of the uh, content, uh, leading to very low pressure drop uh, in condition of extracorporeal circulation. The design of the cartridge is also made in order to make possible a, a, a kind of laminar flow distribution and uh, uh, no turbulence inside the interparticle uh, pathway. And uh, improved interparticle rheology has been achieved with the specific uh, uh, composition of the beads and the uh, structure of the beads, uh, which have similar dimension. High hemocompatibility of the sorbent has been tested in our laboratory, showing that uh, both in static tests and dynamic tests, viability of cells and apoptosis and necrosis uh, do not display significant variation and certainly not worsening when utilizing uh, the cartridge instead of the control sham uh, uh, extracorporeal circulation. Finally, easy application of the technique is something to be considered. Now, there are advantages and rational for the application, which we have described, and the possibility of placing the sorbent in direct contact with blood, thanks to the hemocompatibility, represent a great possibility. And this can be done directly putting the sorbent as a single entity in the hemoperfusion circuit or combining the sorbent together with the dialyzer in a 
hemoperfusion plus hemodialysis extracorporeal circuit, which is something that we also do in acute patients where we combine hemoperfusion with the CRRT. And this is a typical situation where the filter is applied in conjunction with the dialyzer in a dialysis patient. You see a stable behavior of arterial and venous pressure in the extracorporeal circuit, which shows clearly that no clotting occurs during the treatment. And we have studied the in vitro at different blood flows, the pressure drop during the recirculation of whole blood with a matocrit of 33% and temperature between 33 and 37 degrees. And you see that, for example, even at the highest blood level, there is no change in delta pressure under the 18, under 16, after 2.5 hours of treatment. So today we can consider this type of cartridge for the following indication, chronic inflammation, beta-2 microglobulin accumulation, malnutrition, uremic pruritus, uremic middle molecule retention, uremic symptoms in general, muscular weakness, loss of appetite, depression and sleep disorders, and osteoarticular pain. The documented effects uh, are improvement in appetite, muscular strength, cognitive function, pain relief, sleep improvement, uh, blood pressure control and quality of life. I think that these aspects will be discussed by the next speaker in the next hour or so. So while we have unmet clinical needs and long-term outcomes in dialysis are unsatisfactory and quality of life and rehabilitation are suboptimal and cl clinical complications are frequently observed and often they are severe, and we know that uremia is not fully corrected due to insufficient cleansing. We know that this is correlated with the wide spectrum of molecules that are retained in blood. High level of such molecules correlate with specific outcomes. And therefore, patients are often inflamed, malnourished, and anemic. Current membranes are inadequate to achieve full correction, even in treatments such as high volume chemodiafiltration, where these molecules can be still retained. Therefore, new options are needed for end-stage kidney disease patients, and hemoperfusion plus hemodialysis can be a new therapeutic option. In particular, we might uh, observe that uh, it may be useful to do at least one session per week of hemoperfusion combined with hemodialysis to remove a greater amount of middle to large molecular weight solutes that cannot be removed by classic membranes. And in some studies that are to be published very, very uh, 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 soon, hemoperfusion plus hemodialysis was uh, able to correct uh, uh, several different symptoms, including muscular weakness, cognitive dysfunction, and pruritus. So I think this is a very important possibility to offer to our patient. 